Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Jamal Kindi from PetroDroidness and today I'm going to be covering the 4 most commonly used types of drilling mods as well as the additives used in mixing them. Uh, if you do find this video helpful and or entertaining, please consider uh, sharing it with your friends as well as uh, subscribing to the channel for every now and then petroleum videos. The 4 most commonly used uh, types of drilling mods are water based, oil based, gas based and emulsion based but before we get into each and every one of them we need to define what blank based is so what water based is so if i have uh if i have water and i'm fasting so i'm, I'm not gonna um drink it but if we have this water and we want to make vimto okay so we made vimto so the majority of the fluid is water i did add vimto in it but it's not Vimto based, it's water based. This first quenching goodness is water based. Now let's start talking about uh, the most commonly used type of drilling mods, which is water based mod. Uh, there are a number of reasons why the most obvious one is that water is the most accessible uh, fluid uh, compared to oil and gas and also it's the cheapest so it's more cost efficient to use it also water-based mods are the most manageable when there are fluid losses so when you lose your mod into the formation it's easier to use uh, things called lcm uh, lost circulation material we'll talk about them uh, at uh, later in the video. The second type of uh, drill mods is oil based mod where uh, you have oil sorry as a continuous phase and water as a dispersed phase. What does dispersed phase means? It means that it's kind of spread around in the, in the uh, fluid itself, in the mod itself. Now oil based mods have a number of advantages over uh, water based mods. One of them and one of the most obvious one of them is that it has a higher thermal stability than water. Um, water, they, um, I mean, it's in its core form, in its natural form, um, water would uh, vaporize at a lower temperature compared to oil. So as you get drilled deeper into the Earth's surface, you are approaching the core uh, of the Earth, so your temperature gets higher. And the higher the, the, higher the depth, the higher the temperature. So um, most of the times, uh, a very high depth means that you would maybe need to use uh, oil-based mods uh, just so you don't get whole stability problems. Another advantage is that the oil-based mods uh, have less filtrate, so less mud going into the formation or less um, liquid form mud going into the formation compared to water. Another, another advantage is that oil-based mods don't cause um, shear swelling as much as water-based mods. I will talk about what shale swelling or clay swelling is uh, later in the video. On the other hand, you have um, some disadvantages uh, of uh, oil-based mods compared to water-based mods. One of them is that it contaminates the environments, the, the subsurface environment, uh, more than water. So if you drill into the formation with water-based mods, uh, if it does uh, infiltrate uh, an aquifer, you, you'll, uh, so an aquifer is an accumulation of water uh, in the subsurface. Uh, so if you comp contaminate it with water-based mods, uh, it's not as polluting as uh, oil-based mods because you will be mixing uh, water mixed with something with, with, <laughs> with a huge amount of water. Uh, whereas when you go with a foreign fluid, uh, oil for example, you will be contaminating that water supply or that aquifer and maybe even cause drilling problems in the future. The second disadvantage is that oil is flammable so if you have a kick into the formation and there are some sparks in your uh, between your drilling bit and your rocks a light or a spark from uh, the drill bit can cause a blowout because not only is your kick uh, flammable your whole mud system is flammable so a spark in the uh, bottom you will cause a blowout at the surface. Another disadvantage is that removing oil-based mods from cuttings at the surface is much harder when you compare it to removing water-based mods from the surface. Uh, you can imagine uh, trying uh, having a rock and then uh, spinning water on it and having another rock and spinning honey on it. Um, removing that water is gonna be so much easier uh, when you compare it to removing that honey from the rock. It's possible but it's gonna be harder thus more expensive. The last disadvantage is that um, electric logging uh, is almost impossible uh, with oil-based mud because uh, it has a 
very, 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 very high resistivity to current. So you can't really conduct electricity. Thus, you can't do any calculations that depend on conducting electricity. Moving on to the third type of drill mods, which is emulsion mods. So uh, it's the opposite of oil-based mods. It has a majority of water and then the minority as oil-based mods. I'll postpone talking about this type of mod and gas-based mods to the next video uh, because um, gas-based mod is used in something called underbalanced drilling, which I think uh, deserve a whole video about it. Moving on, we know that uh, drilling mod is a mixture of fluids and chemical additives. Uh, so uh, let's talk about these additives and what their effects are. First of all, we have reactive fractions, which are low gravity clays that are added in the mud or to the mud to increase its viscosity. So increasing the viscosity of the mud will increase its lifting cap capabilities and also suspension capabilities. So lifting uh, the cuttings. So when you lift cuttings up to the surface, that's the lifting capability. And the suspension capability is um, if there is a workover operation and you need the mud to stay uh, still, then you don't want your cuttings to go down to, to fall then you have to suspend them you need a fluid that has high viscosity to make that suspension that uh, them holding still possible examples of reactive fractions are uh, bentonite for freshwater based muds and atapulgai for brine or uh, seawater uh, based mods. Different reactive fractions are used differently in different salinity mods and that's because the interaction between the additive and the mod um, that has that certain salinity differs. Second is the inert fraction which increases the density of the mod and increasing the density of the mod means that you are increasing the overall well bore pressure so the whole pressure uh, because it is uh, the pump pressure plus the hydrostatic pressure of the mud and uh, the hydrostatic pressure of the mud is rho gh rho is the density so increasing the rho means that you are increasing the overall pressure to increase the density of the mud slightly you would use chert or quartz which have a little bit of a higher density than water and to increase the uh, mud weight significantly rather than slightly you would use uh, either iron dioxide galena or barite which have significantly higher density compared to water the third category of additives is called inhibitors and this specifically targets one problem which is clay hydration it's a very severe problem that happens mostly in water based muds and let's talk about what clay hydration is clay hydration or clay swelling is the expansion of clay because it's exposure to water so um, i found a good video that illustrates the same point uh, you have on the right some um, clay rich material let's call it shale and on the left you have sand and you can see that uh, on the exposure of inhibitorless uh, liquid so just pure water you can see that the clay expands the easiest way for the clay to go would be into the well bore the open well bore um, and that would cause shale to fall into the well bore and when you try to pull out of the hole POOH then you'll get a stuck pipe. Another chemical additive is mud thinners where the liquid passes through the clay and then um, neutralizes any positive charged faces or edges of the clay so if you have a negative faced clay and a positive faced clay and they're attached to each other because they're opposite charges then the mud thinner will, will pass through those and and then they will detach these two beautiful lovebirds and this detachment causes lower viscosity examples for mud thinners would be phosphate lignite and uh, surfactants um, google them if you want to delve deeper uh, into the topic i'm just uh, throwing those out there in case anyone is uh, curious about what each and every one of them does or they can be polymers such as long chain polymers extender polymers and colloidal polymers um, you can also google them at last we have specialty products which are specifically designed to solve one kind of problem or several problems with one um, additive for example if you have mud loss so you you lost your mud into the formation because you exceeded the fracture pressure or you lost your mud in natural fractures so fractures that are, were already in the formation 
uh, but you, you didn't uh, detect them in your seismic service. Then you would use lost circulation materials, LCM, uh, and those are materials that you put into the mud, so you plug those uh, fractures up and then you can continue uh, on your beautiful drilling operation. Another product is uh, spotting fluids, which are uh, designed, they're, they're basically another type of mud uh, that you design uh, in order to resolve uh, a stuck pipe problem. So um, it's a well-known fact that oil-based muds uh, kind of remove filter cake as they go uh, in the annulus uh, up towards the surface so if you're operating with uh, a water-based mud and you have a stuck pipe because it's stuck on the filter cake then you can uh, inject a spotting fluid so another type of mud so um, let's say oil-based mud you inject it into the uh, drill bit it circulates up and then as it passes through the filter cake it kind of removes it and then it's easier for you to remove the stuck pipe from uh, wherever the, your uh, pipe is stuck at. The same goes if you have high friction, then you would use um, lubricants. If you have a H2S problem, you would use scavengers. And if you have uh, any corrosion problems, you would use corrosion inhibitors. Uh, and that's pretty much it for uh, drilling muds. In the next video, we will go a little bit more in depth in uh, mud calculations and how much mud you would need uh, in your annulus and drill pipe. So uh, stay tuned for that. If you do find this video helpful and or entertaining, please uh, consider sharing it with your inquisitive friends and uh, subscribe to the channel for every now and then petroleum videos. Um, hopefully you'll see me guys in the next one. Hayako.